A listener note, this episode contains adult content and is not suitable for everyone. Please be advised. Ted Kaczynski, also known as the Unabomber, died in prison on June 10, 2023. Back in 1996, Candace played an important role in the capture of Kaczynski while she was undercover in Montana. So for the next three episodes, I wanted to discuss with her how she became involved with the case and the impact that it had on her, both professionally and personally. From Wondery and Tree Fort Media, I'm Candace DeLong, and this is Killer Psyche Daily. So for those of you that are not familiar with this case, you can listen to season one, episode one of Killer Psyche, or you could read it in even more detail in Candace's book called Special Agent, My Life on the Front Lines as a Woman in the FBI. And I would recommend reading that not just because she's sitting here staring at me, but because it's a really good book and it has a lot of great information. But I'm going to have her repeat a couple of things because I think if you haven't listened or you haven't read, then there are things that we're going to be talking about that really will leave you questioning. So I think the first thing that we should talk about, Candace, is how you became involved in the Unabomber case. Sure. I had been an agent about 16 years. I had just transferred from Chicago to San Francisco, and I was assigned to the Unabomb task force there. That was in the fall of 95. And in early February of 96, the name Ted Kaczynski became very important to the investigation. But the Unabom investigation was almost as long as my career in the FBI, 16 years. And the most recent bombs were postmarked from a San Francisco post office. San Francisco became the lead office for the Unabom investigation. It had been Chicago in the 70s and 80s, but then the Unabomber's activities were dormant for about five and a half, six years. So a lot of people thought, well, he's probably dead or he's in prison on some other charge. At any rate, the case was closed. Well, it was reopened later by the San Francisco division because of those devices being mailed and the postmark San Francisco. That's quite a cooling off period. Why do we think that he was dormant for those years? The reason was in 1987, which was the last time we heard from him for quite a while, for six years almost, he placed a bomb at a computer rental store in Salt Lake City. When the owner of the store drove into the parking lot, he saw this device or object in the parking lot, and he kicked it. It exploded, and he was injured. Well, it just so happened that a woman inside the computer store that worked there was looking out her window before this happened, and she recalled seeing a man in the parking lot who... When she looked at him, it looked like he was just coming up from a bent over position. We think after he placed the bomb, before he walked away, he looked right at that woman inside who was looking at him. He was wearing a hooded sweatshirt and aviator glasses. So she really couldn't describe his face at all. And of course, that is the famous composite sketch that was developed of the individual known as the Unabomber. There was a sketch of him on every newspaper in the country. He did not do anything for the next five and a half to six years. Candace, why did they name him the Unabomber? This is what the Bureau does. They make kind of an anagram out of the type of case it is, and this was a bombing case in the beginning, and in this case, targets 
Two early targets of the Unabomber were universities. That's where the UN comes from. And the A stands for airlines. Airlines were also targeted, in particular, United Airlines. And so you got UN for universities, A for airlines, and bomb for the type of case that it was, Unabomb. Do we know why Kaczynski picked those targets in particular? Kaczynski picked targets that were associated with technology. Some of them were professors of computer science. Airlines were targets because we later found out Ted Kaczynski didn't like airlines because he didn't like airplanes flying over the skies in Montana, where he lived. Wow. He was easily upset. He had a short fuse. He says in his manifesto, the reason they were sending the bombs was to stop the spread of technology. There's a term for people that want nothing to do with modern day technology, whatever it is. Whatever was modern day technology in 1900, there were people that wanted nothing to do with it. And the term for them is Luddite. So that's kind of what he was considered. He knew Ted Kaczynski, in my opinion, high IQ, not seriously mentally ill, disturbed, yes. Hearing voices, delusional, no. He knew sending bombs here, there, and everywhere and blowing the fingers off a doctor who opened the bomb in his kitchen or or blinding a professor who opened the bomb, that wasn't going to stop the spread of technology. I don't think that was his motive at all. Well, what do you think his motive was? His motive? Revenge. Anger and revenge. Revenge on what? Revenge on society that he believed had rejected him. Ted Kaczynski could not fit in easily anywhere his entire life. And as he got older, he became very isolated. And we've talked on many Killer Psyche episodes about the dangers of isolation as people get older and that paranoid delusions even can sometimes start in the later years. And he became a dangerous person. Was he having paranoid delusions? No, I don't think so. He would not allow his defense attorneys to claim not guilty by reason of insanity. And he would not allow it because he believed he was not insane. And he was not insane, by the way. And during the early days of the trial, one day during a break, when he was in his cell, he tried to hang himself. And after that, his defense counsel was able to convince him to meet with a psychiatrist. And she determined that his diagnosis was paranoid schizophrenia. And using that, was able to get the government to, if he pled guilty to life in prison, the death penalty would be taken off the table. And that's how that went down. Is Ted Kaczynski a paranoid schizophrenic? No. I worked with paranoid schizophrenics for years. Was he paranoid? Maybe a little bit. He hated people. He hated airplanes overhead. He hated his neighbors. Uh, He was just an angry guy. Tomorrow, we're going to continue this three-part special. We hope to see you then. See you tomorrow for another episode of Killer Psyche Daily. Hey, Prime members, if you want to listen to more episodes of Killer Psyche Daily, sign in to the Amazon Music app with your Prime account and follow Killer Psyche Daily. If you're not a Prime member, you can listen to the show by subscribing to Amazon Music Unlimited in the Amazon Music app.